LinkedIn has some of the best B2B targeting on the web. It's as specific as your LinkedIn profile is. And if you're anything like me, you try to keep that mostly up to date. It might not be as robust as it should be, but it's at least accurate and it gives a sense of what I do for a job, what industry I'm in, all that good stuff. There's lots of different places that we try to reach B2B people like on Facebook or Google search, something like that. But it's really hard to narrow down into exactly who you're trying to target. And LinkedIn is really the answer when it comes to that. So there's a lot of different ways you can target people on the LinkedIn network. Nearly everything that has to do with your profile and how you set up what your current uh, job is and your job history, all that kind of thing is targetable in the LinkedIn platform. But there are some other things based on your interactions, the interests you show and all that sort of thing. So today I want to walk through the targeting options on the LinkedIn platform and a couple of different areas that might save you a little bit of time just clicking a bunch of buttons. So let's jump into the interface and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This video is brought to you by Shape, an all-in-one PPC budgeting solution designed for you to control, organize, and collaborate on PPC ad spend at scale. Ready to start saving some time? Check out the link below to learn all about Shape. So now that I've set up a new campaign in the platform, I wanna just hop into this audience section and it's right below the campaign objective. So it's pretty much exactly where you start. We're gonna skip the stuff that's up here for just a little bit. We'll come back to that in a minute. The first thing you're going to come across is location. And this is just your simple geo targeting, nothing too extra fancy here. You can utilize country level targeting, state level, city level, whichever makes the most sense for your business. Obviously there's a little warning here that says they're making updates to location targeting. So if you watch this anytime close to when this video comes out, you might be seeing the same thing. Just make sure that you've got your geo targeting set the way you want it. But today I think the bigger piece that we want to talk about comes more down into this target audience section and how this works. There are two main buckets when you're coming to your target audience. It's this audience attributes and matched audiences. The biggest way to think about this is audience attributes basically means everything on the LinkedIn platform. These are your job titles, your seniority, the industry company, all this kind of stuff. The matched audiences are more your customer uploads and retargeting lists that you make. It's something that LinkedIn doesn't really have specific insight into because you have created them. So they don't know how that necessarily matches up directly to a profile file at this stage. So let's hop into the first part and we'll talk about all the targeting that's on LinkedIn. So in this audience attributes section, which is already selected when you get here, you can see that there are five main categories here, company, demographics, education, job experience, and interests and personas, basically. So the first we'll jump into is company. And this basically means that you're going to start segmenting your targeting based on the company or companies that people currently work for. So if we click in here, we can start to see company connections, follower of, industry name, size, all this good stuff. Company connections is the first one you come across and it's a little bit interesting. It's basically reaching the first degree connections of somebody who works at a company that you want to target. And it says that you can only really target people with over 500 employees. So if for whatever reason you want to reach people who are connected to somebody who works at Nike, for example, this is how you would do that. And let me show you what it looks like. If you click on company connections, it'll then bring you over to a search bar where you can search for the name of the company that you wanna find the connections for. I'm gonna type in Nike and it brings up sporting goods. It says that there's 10,000 plus employees. I think we all knew that. So it's got plenty of employees and can fit in this list. So just the company connections of people who work at Nike is 920,000 people in the US. It's a pretty good size list. So now the next thing I wanna do is show you some of the other targeting that's in here. So I'm going to remove this company connections piece. And every time you add something, you can click this little trash can. Sometimes it's an X that's over here just to get rid of the targeting that you already have. So it'll ask you if you wanna remove it. And I do. So now it'll say all company connections have been removed. If you make a mistake and you didn't mean to remove something, you can actually just click undo and it'll bring it right back. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it again because I actually do want to remove it. So then I'm gonna click this X so I don't accidentally undo my removal. But next you come into company and let's say we wanna target people who actually work at Nike to see the difference here. So I'm gonna come down to company names and I'm gonna type in Nike, click the same listing for Nike here. And now the audience is down to 39,000. That's the difference between connections and the people who actually work at the companies. You're not targeting the people who work at Nike. You're targeting the people who are first connections of those who work at Nike. So that's the key difference between company name and connections of. So just pay attention to that when you're trying to target specific companies on the LinkedIn platform. 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove this since we've got the sake of the example done. But we're going to hop back into company and just start to show some of the other pieces. Company follower of means that you can target people who follow your company page on LinkedIn. You might have started seeing people inviting you to follow a company page recently, or you've done that in the past to make sure that whatever they post on their page comes into your newsfeed. This is the way you can target people who follow your page. So the little warning here just tells you to make sure that your page is connected to your ad account. So as long as that's done, you can target everybody who follows your page on LinkedIn. You cannot do this for other company pages. So that's the one thing to keep in mind. You can only do it for your page. Now next is company industries. This one is actually a preset list of different things. So if you click in here, you can see agriculture, arts, construction. If you scroll down further, there's finance, healthcare, legal. And at this point, you'll notice that there's just words and you can highlight over them, but there's no checkbox. We'd have to click into legal. And then now we can see legal services, law practice, alternative dispute resolution. And here is where we would actually have to check the box next to which targeting option we want. Just be aware that just because you clicked legal doesn't mean that you've actually applied targeting just yet. And if nothing else, there's always the safe bet of making sure that once you check the box, a forecasted results and some of this breakdown information came up over here on the right. And you can see the target audience size that you have. And that way you've known you actually applied the audiences that you wanted to have in here. We'll just uncheck these for now and hop back in, go to company back here. And then the last is company size. And I think this will be pretty self-explanatory. This is based on the number of employees that work at a company. So it can be anything from myself only, two to 10 employees, 11 to 50, all the way down here to similar to what we saw with Nike where it's 10,000 and one plus employees. So getting into some of those much more enterprise level companies. So if we wanna take a step back and get out of the company realm, and now we wanna focus on demographics of the user, there's only two that are in here and it's member age and gender. And either one of these that you click into, you're going to start to see this checkbox here that says that you will not discriminate based on the information that is in here. You're basically promising LinkedIn that you will not discriminate based on the information that somebody has provided about their age or gender, because both of those are illegal. LinkedIn is making sure that their bases are covered. So you'd have to check this box for these options to show up. And again, you can then start to click based on the different member ages that you would wanna have in here. The same thing would apply to member gender if that was the section that we had gone under. But for now, we'll leave that off. The next is education. And you'll see that you can target based on degrees, fields of study, or where they went to school. All of these options are some of the more frustrating options for me, honestly, because each one of them, when you come in here, you're provided a search bar. There's not a checklist that you can go off of. So you basically have to know the member schools, fields of study, or degree names that you want to target. So before you jump into this area, if the level of education somebody has had or the degree or the school that they went to, if that's important for you, just make sure you have a list set up because you're gonna need to type these in manually because there's not a pre set checklist for you to go off of. And the next is job experience. And this is where we start to focus on what they do in their job or what they have done in their job in the past. So the first is job function. And this is kind of a broad look at what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Is their job mostly focused on accounting or is it administrative work, business development, consulting, lots of different options, healthcare services, finance, legal. These are the very broad strokes of what somebody's job could be, but it's really helpful if you're trying to narrow down a certain certain function of job, but you don't want to have to utilize job titles to do it. Invariably at this point in history, people make up super goofy job titles that don't actually correlate to what their job is. It might help you if you are trying to target people who are doing that, or you just haven't found the right reach with job titles. Job function can be a very good way to start targeting people based on what they do without having to type in a lot of job titles. After functions, we have seniorities, and these I think are pretty self-explanatory. It goes anywhere from unpaid, which could be anywhere from an intern to volunteer, something along those lines, to training, entry level. Now we're starting to get into senior, a manager, director level, all the way down to VP, a CXO, which what that means is basically insert any letter in place of that X, whether it's a CEO, a CMO, a CFO, for chief executive officer, chief financial officer, chief marketing officer, any of these different pieces, this basically means they're going to be at the CEO level or CXO level. 
or owner or partner of the firm. If you want to make sure that you reach people who are only director or above, these are all in order. So just make sure that you've got all those squared away in terms of level of seniority. If you only want to reach people who are decision makers, or maybe you just want to reach the lower end, everybody who is entry level or training, something along those lines. After seniorities, we have job titles. And I know I talked about this a little bit in the job functions area. So let's take a little bit more time and dedicate to this piece. This is another one of those frustrating areas where you don't get a preset drop down checklist. You have to know what you want to go after, but there are some areas that are set up a little bit better here. So if I want to target people who are the owner of a company, you could either use the job seniority to do that, or I can come in here and type in owner and the list of all the job titles that contain owner will show up here in a drop down checklist. So it's a bit of a blend. You can choose either owner, co-owner, maybe they're an independent business owner, product owner, which is very different from actually owning a company, small business owner versus agency agency owner, part owner, a lot of different things you can type in here. So depending on what you're looking for, just change what you've searched for and a new list will come up. So let's say I'm looking for anybody in the marketing department. I could just come up here and type in marketing. Now we can see marketing specialist, manager, director, assistant, all this good stuff. Adding in job titles can be a very tedious manual process. You do have a little bit of help with the search function, but it can also be a little bit of a pain and depending on how specific it is, might make sense for you to use job function. Now we're going to start coming down into member skills. You can come over here. This is another one of those areas where you have to type things in. You have to know what you want, but this is based on the different skills that a person might have. Just because you work in the accounting department doesn't mean that you might not have other skills. So they've already given some examples of Microsoft Excel, project coordination, management, technical writing, communication, any specific skills you need somebody to have, whether it qualifies them to need the piece that you're trying to offer them if it's a solution or a product. Just come in here and search for it and see if it pops up. Years of experience is the last one here. So this can help you start to narrow down if somebody has just started a new job, maybe somebody just became a marketing manager and that's not who you want. Maybe you wanna make sure that it's only people who have three plus years of experience at that current role. So you can come in here and click this and then say starting from three years up to 12 years. So somebody has to have three to 12 years of experience to see my ad because anybody who has less than three years experience at their current job or current company or something like that just isn't a good fit for my advertising campaigns. And I wanna leave them out. Years of experience can be something that's really helpful to make sure that you're narrowing down. You could also go the other way and say that you only want people who've been there for a short period of time. Maybe it's anything from one year to three years and anybody in that current piece, but not beyond that, is who you wanna see your ads because they might be the right fit for you, but anybody who has more seniority might not need your training materials or something along those lines. Just keep that in mind that that's how the years of experience ranges work. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this and get back into previous space. So that rounds out all of the job experience areas. So now we're gonna go into the last piece, which is based more on the different interests and personas that you can have in here. There are two targeting options in here, member groups and interests. Groups are a little bit more specific specific groups still rely on your behavior on LinkedIn because they target only the groups that you have opted into. Any group that you know is on LinkedIn, you come in here and you search for it, or you can search for a keyword and it'll provide you a checklist of groups that you can target. So let's say we wanna target people in the travel industry. And these are the names of groups on LinkedIn that you could target that people have opted into, whether it's Travel Nurse Association, Travel Blogger Network, Travel Agent Network. Obviously these are very different groups of people, but they've all opted into a group and bucketed themselves there, whether their job title, their company name, any of that sort of thing actually maps them there through other targeting options. So if you're having a hard time finding the right people because it might be their part-time job or it might be more of a passion project like travel bloggers, that might not be their full-time job, but this could be a great way to reach those people if this is what you're going after. The last piece we want to talk about are member interests. And these are a little bit less specific than groups. If you hover over this, it says reach members based on interests that align with your business. So that's already a little bit less specific. And if we click on here, there's gonna be a preset checklist of things that you can click on. And you'll notice that they are very broad to start. Arts and entertainment, business and management, finance and economy, health, marketing and advertising, 
These are very broad pieces, but if you're trying to target somebody who has a certain job function or works in a specific industry, but you also wanna make sure that they're actually interested in something that you're trying to sell them, this would be a great thing to layer on top just to make sure that they're actually interested in marketing and advertising before you try to get them to, I don't know, subscribe to your YouTube channel or something like that. Just keep that in mind. Now we're gonna come back here and click this little house and come all the way back to the top because we've gone through all of the audience attributes on the LinkedIn platform. So now we're gonna look at the second part that we talked about at the top, and these are matched audiences. So if we click on here, we're gonna see the two audiences types that we can use here. So uploaded lists and website audiences. These are pretty self-explanatory. A website audience is a remarketing list of people who has been to your website, and they've been cookied because of the LinkedIn Insights tag. If we click on this, you'll see that not only are there retargeting audiences here, but I created a lookalike audience of this website retargeting list and it shows up here. If you're ever looking for a lookalike audience, it shows up in the section of the matched audiences group that you created the root audience for. So since this is based on website visitors, it shows up here. If I were to go to uploaded lists, it'll show me all of the customer upload lists that I've added, even the ones that are no longer in use because they've expired. But you can see my customer list is here. And if you scroll down, same thing. I've created lookalike audiences off of these customer lists, so they show up in here. So again, if you're looking for your lookalike audience, this is where they'll show up. So let's go ahead and show one example of how we can start to layer in targeting options. So I'm just gonna add job experience. I want somebody who is a partner, owner, CXO, and VP of a company. Now that I have those added, we can see those are forecasting results over here on the right. I can then narrow my audience and say, if somebody has this job seniority and they also fit another set of targeting just by clicking this button down here where it says narrow audience further. Now we get the same set of attributes that we wanted to add here. The only thing that you won't be able to do, if I come back in here down to job experience and job title, you'll see that it went away because job titles are a pretty finicky targeting option. And if you've already added in seniorities, you can no longer add in the job titles here, but you can start to add in different things. You can add in job function, some of the member skills, all that good stuff. That's how you would add in some additional pieces. If we wanna also exclude people, you can come in here and click exclude audience. And you could start to target people who are partner, owner, CXO, VP, but then exclude people who work at specific companies or have specific interests or something along those lines to narrow your audience and get a little bit further focused on the target audience that you want. Now, the last piece I wanna talk about is this little bar down here that has three things in it. And we're gonna talk about two of them. The first is this enable audience expansion. And if you hover over this little piece here, it basically says reach people who are similar to your target audience. What that means is that LinkedIn is going to look at all of the targeting options that you just set up. So for the example I have here, it's gonna be just my job seniorities, but it could be other things. And it's gonna go try and find people who are similar to those users beyond the preset 15 million users that I already have in my audience. This can be really helpful if you're finding it hard to create new audiences based on the standard LinkedIn targeting to expand your reach. But I personally like to leave this off because I just find that I already set up this entire audience that's really specific to who I want it to be. I don't really want it to start to blur the edges and get a little bit fuzzier. I really want my targeting to be crisp. So pretty much always I uncheck this unless I'm having a hard time expanding my reach and I'm seeing good performance and I want to get more scale out of it. For the most part, I would say by default, uncheck this box and then only check it if you want to find incremental scale within a well-performing campaign. The next thing I want to talk about is coming over here to save as template. One of the things that from advertising and LinkedIn for a number of years now, I've found the most frustrating, and I think I've mentioned it a couple times in this video, are things like job titles where there's a search bar where it takes quite a while to search different keywords and to have the job titles come up and check the box next to it. So if you have a big list of job titles, let's say you've typed in 50 job titles and you know you're gonna use this audience more than once, come down here to save as template. You can then name your audience and you can add a description to make sure that you'll remember it next time around. And I'm not gonna save this here, but if I were to have typed something in and click save, remember these things that I talked about at the top? Saved audiences is up here. So in this account, there are already some saved audiences. So you can click this blue link and you can see that we've already got an exclusion list that we wanna get rid of. We've already got fitness industry and titles. We've already got company targets a couple times. There's already a few saved audiences. And if I were to click one of these, 
it will then alert me that it's going to replace all of the existing targeting I have because there's something in here. So if you wanted to do this, you would just click OK and it would apply all of the targeting that you had saved the first time around. In this instance, I'm not going to do it, but that's a great way to save audiences, save some time creating new campaigns if you have to type in bunches of job titles or member degrees or something along those lines. The last thing I want to say about LinkedIn targeting is if you just don't know where to start, but you have some idea of who you need to target, check out this box right here that's got the LinkedIn logo and then it just says audiences. If we click this drop down, you can open it up and you can see there are a number that already kind of show up at the top that should give you some idea of what this is. Members with a bachelor's degree, expertise in Bitcoin and blockchain, expertise in computer science, corporate HR professionals, all this stuff. There's a lot of preset audiences that you can have in here. So let's just say I want to target people who are experts in IT. So I can come up here and type in IT. Obviously the letter matching is going to show up with with, but there's also a group down here called IT decision makers. And for a lot of people, decision makers are the right kind of people that we're trying to target. So that's a pretty appealing audience for me. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna do the same thing it did with the saved audience. And it's gonna alert me that it's gonna replace everything I have. This time I'm gonna let it do it. And you'll notice that all of this has changed. It says the audience is IT decision makers up here. It's got the forecasted results, but then you can come down here and see that what it did is it added in a number of job seniorities and job functions that would align with what you would think an IT decision maker would have. You can then customize beyond this. This just basically put it in the editor for you. So let's say that I think engineering is a little too far of a reach. I can take that off and I can do the same thing if I wanna get rid of manager and director. LinkedIn has already done some of the work for me to tell me who IT decision makers are. Then I just refined what they had in here and made it a little bit more targeted for my business. As you can see, there are a ton of targeting options on the LinkedIn platform, and I will pretty much guarantee you that whatever you need to target your B2B audience and find those right people within their job functions, job titles, the responsibilities, you'll be able to find on the LinkedIn platform. So next time you're trying to put together some B2B campaigns, this should be the first place you start. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos. 